All right, let's look at another example. Um, now this is one that you probably shouldn't try to do by hand. Um, chances are you want to have a, at the very least a scientific calculator with you. Uh, even better would be a spreadsheet. Um, I'll try to explain why as we get there. Okay. Um, so the, the goal here is we, we want to approximate the cosine function with a Maclaurin polynomial. And we want to figure out what is the smallest degree that we need if we want to make sure that our approximation it has a certain degree of accuracy when we are approximating cosine of 2, right? So we know that our Maclaurin polynomial for cos, okay, if you work through this example, it looks something like this. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial x to the 4 over 4 factorial x to the 6 over 6 factorial x to the 8th over 8 factorial x to the 10 over 10 factorial and so on up to up to whatever you know depending on the degree how far you want to go okay so so that's what the, co the the Taylor polynomial for cosine looks like Maclaurin polynomial we're centering at zero we want to figure out how many of these terms do we need to include to get this degree of accuracy, right? So cos of 2, we'd approximate with Pn of 2. So we'd approximate with 1 minus 4 over 2 factorial plus 16 over 4 factorial, right? Minus 64 over 6 factorial and, and so on. Um, we want to try and approximate this. So again, we rely on Taylor's theorem. And we say, okay, I know that, that by Taylor's theorem, I know that the remainder is always going to be less than or equal to this maximum value for the n plus first derivative at some t over n plus 1 factorial, right, and then this is just simply going to be uh, absolute value of x to the n, right? Because we're, we're centering at 0. So x minus c just becomes x. All right. Now, one of the things that, that we know here, right, is, is we know what these derivatives are. Now, of course, it depends on n. But we know that these, these derivatives, they cycle, right? We're going to take the first derivative, we get negative sine, then negative cos, then positive sine, then positive cos, and then repeat, right? So every, every four derivatives, it repeats. So we know, um, well, the absolute value eats that plus or minus, right? So this is either going to be cos t or sine t, once you take the absolute value. Um, okay. And, and I haven't written down an interval here. I guess we could go with something like, uh, you know, from minus 0 0.1 up to 2.1, something like that. Um, but it, it doesn't matter because we know that, what do we know about these trig functions? We know that the absolute value of cos is always less than or equal to 1. And we know that the same thing is true for sine, right? Doesn't matter what t is, these can never be bigger than 1. This is a property of sine and cosine functions. So that means that regardless of the inter interval that we're working on, this maximum can't be bigger than 1. So the remainder, if we're doing this at 2, has to be less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1 factorial times 2, oops, sorry, to the n plus 1. Okay? And, and now the rest is kind of trial and error, computational work, plugging in values of n until you find the first n that gives you a small enough value, right? We want it to be less than 0 0.001. Uh, this is where a spreadsheet is really great because all you do is you take one column and you label it n. And you have another column that you label, I don't know, Rn or error or something, right? And 
you just fill the values down. In fact, I think if you put one and you drag, it will fill the rest in automatically on a decent spreadsheet, right? And, and then the RN, you say, okay, so what is, what is RN? You can, you can kind of program this into your spreadsheet, right? You say it's going to be um, two to the power of, you know, so if this is, if this is in like cell, maybe this is like a two here, right? So you're, you're like, okay, so it's going to be two to the power of, of a two divide by, um, oh, plus one, right? Because we add one to the exponent, divide by like factorial a2 plus one. And then you just copy it down, right? And when you copy in the spreadsheet, it's going to increment this as you copy it down. And then it's just going to do those calculations for you automatically. So you don't have to do it. It's great, right? But of course, you can, you can do these, right? Um, you can start working them out. So when n is equal to one, um, you get 2 squared over 2 factorial, 4 over 2. You get 2. Well, that's definitely not going to work. So you go to n equals 2. 2 cubed over 3 factorial, 8 over 6, 4 thirds. Uh, it's about 1.3-ish. Still too big. You go to n equals 3. 2 to the 4, 16 over 4 factorial, which is 24. That's 3 quarters. So you're at, you're at 0 0.75, right? And, and you, keep, you keep working your way down. You keep doing these. So you go, okay, n equals 4, uh, 32 over, over 5 factorial. So 32 over, over 120. And, and you get that this is about 0 0.267, right? And then you go to 5. So 5 plus 1 is 6. 64 over 6 factorial. So 64 over 720. And you get something like I've got them written, the numbers written down over there. I don't remember these. Uh, this is now 0 0.084. Getting better, right? So you keep going. Um, for n equals 6, 0 0.025, right? Um, 6 plus 1, you get 2 to the 7. So we're at like 128. 7 factorial is getting, you know, we're getting there is like 5,040, right? But still. Okay, and, and now one of the things that you'll notice as you play around these examples is factorials, they grow much faster than exponentials, right? Because here you're just multiplying by two each time. Here, the next thing you multiply is bigger than the previous thing, All right? So you keep going. And the next one you get, um, you're doing like 256 divided by like 40,000 and something, and you get 0 0.006. And then you try 8, and you got 512 for your, for your 2 to the 9. And then you're dividing by 9 factorial, which is like 362,000 something. And you get 0 0.0014, almost there, but not quite, right? So you say, oh, we got to go to 9. So we go to n equals 9. And for n equals 9, right, you get uh, 2 to the 10 over 10 factorial, okay? So, so two to the 10 is like, is, is, is 1,000, it's 1,024. Um, 10 factorial is, I don't know, it's like three, three million something, right? Three million and something. And, and, and you do get something which is indeed less than 0 0.01. So you're like, yes. I guess I got to go to degree nine, but that's not quite the end of the story because hey, here's our here's our polynomial, right? Um, the coefficient of x to the nine in the Maclaurin polynomial for cos is zero. Okay, so right, um, I can actually stop at eight because the degree nine Maclaurin polynomial is the same as the degree eight Maclaurin polynomial, right? Because when you go to degree nine, you're adding zero. Nothing changes. So in fact, um, n equals eight will do, right? And, and then maybe you're concerned. You're like, hey, hey, but you know, this number was too big. Like, that doesn't make sense. How can, how can you know, we get this much smaller number for n equals 9 uh, than we have here, but they're the same polynomial. Like, shouldn't the error be the same? 
Uh, and of course, the error is the same because remember, we don't know this value precisely. We're always just going for the worst case scenario. What's the biggest that it could be, right? These numbers here are bigger than the actual error, right? So typically, once you get something that's close to the error you're looking for, because you're overestimating, you're probably already good at n equals 8. But sometimes you add one more term just to be safe.